Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to make an alternative to a classic tiramisu, which is going to be a tiramisu cake. For that I'm going to make a sponge cake and a mascarpone cream. So for our sponge cake we need 4 eggs, flour, sugar, warm water, baking powder and a pinch of salt. I sift the flour and the baking powder first and mix them together to avoid any clumps later in the cake batter. Now I put in my mixing bowl the eggs, the sugar, the salt and the warm water and I mix them for 8 to 10 minutes until the cake batter had increased its volume about 3 times and turned pale yellow to almost white. Then I put in the flour and the baking powder and mix it carefully from the outside to the inside. There's a lot of air in the cake batter and I want to keep it that way because that makes the cake really fluffy. My cake ring has a diameter of 24 cm or 9.5 inches. I fill the cake ring with the cake batter and then it goes into the oven and bakes for 45 to 50 minutes at 170 degrees of Celsius or 340 Fahrenheit. So my cake is done and now I let it cool down. For our mascarpone cream we need mascarpone, quark, whipped cream, coca powder, sugar, whipped cream stabilizer, espresso and coffee liqueur. If you don't want any alcohol in your cake, you can replace the coffee liqueur with caramel syrup. One part of the mascarpone cream is quark. I use it because it has a lower fat content. These are some alternatives for quark if you don't find quark in your local grocery store. But if you don't mind the high fat content, you can use mascarpone only as well. So I start by whipping up the mascarpone and adding gradually the whipped cream. Don't worry, the whipped cream makes it a little bit soupy, but that's gonna change the longer you whip it up. Next I fill in the sugar and since the cream is really runny right now, the sugar is easily getting dissolved. So now it's time to fill in the quark. And as I said, if you don't find any quark in your local grocery store, just use mascarpone only. So I put in the quark gradually as well, to give the cream time to uh, incorporate all the ingredients and to get a smooth and creamy texture. If you want to, you can add some vanilla extract as well. So the last thing I put in is the whipped cream stabilizer to give it the right texture. The reason for me to use whipped cream stabilizer is it makes the cream really firm and creamy like buttercream. You can use it immediately, there is no cooling time required and you can go on and fill your cake with it. So my cake has been completely cooled down and I can take it out of the cake ring. I cut it two times and the first layer is a little thicker than the other two and this one is going to be my bottom layer. I put some cream on the plate which keeps the first layer in place. So then I mix the liqueur with the espresso and as I said, if you don't want any alcohol in your cake, just replace it with caramel syrup. I prefer to use a brush rather than a spoon to moisture the cake because it just gives me more control. One more thing, when you protect your cake plate with some parchment paper, you don't have to be too careful when you cover the cake with the cream. So I roughly divided the cream in three equal parts and uh, I make sure that the cream layers are more or less as thick as the cake layers. 
Since this cake is not going to be a naked cake, you don't have to be too careful when you spread the cream. And uh, just make sure that the layers are equally thick. I roughly spread around the cream with a dough cart and for detailed work I'd like to use a palette knife. So then I put on the second cake layer and I gently press it down and then this cake layer gets moistured as well with the espresso liquor mixture. When I cover the cake, I prefer to put the cream on the top layer first and then I move on to the sides. For detailed work I use a small palette knife. With that I can fill in all the gaps and it gives me a lot of control. I gently smooth the edges from the outside to the inside until the top layer is really nice and smooth. I let it chill for one hour and then I can move on and powder the cake with coca. With the palette knife I cut around the edges of the bottom layer, that makes it easier to pull out the parchment paper. So now it's time to have a look on the inside and I look forward to finally get a taste of the tiramisu cake. Doesn't the cake just look beautiful? The cake layers got really nice and even and I can tell you that much. The tiramisu cake tasted as good as any tiramisu you have had at your favorite Italian restaurant. Well, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know what you think about my tiramisu cake recipe. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time, bye bye!